Hey YouTube, I've been working with Miracle for about three days, four days now. I, t I ponied her on a trail ride yesterday with April. I don't think I got that on film. But today I brought her down to the river. She's been wearing a saddle good for a few days. Um, so we're gonna swim her, play with her in the water, and then climb on and off of her back. It'll be the first time a person's on her back is what our goal is, if she handles everything well. So let's see how she does. She's got a little bit of a fear of water. So this will be good for us. Although having a swimming hole isn't necessary for training a horse, I believe there are many benefits to it. It's just a fun exercise that a horse can, that you can do with your horse other than riding. It provides a safety aspect for when you get on and off and gives you per people a little more confidence to be able to mount their horse without a saddle. But the main benefit is in the psychology of a horse. It creates a stressful situation that is low impact that they have to overcome and they quickly learn that you are the safety net to it and they start to rely on you for that feeling of comfort that they're searching for when they're swimming out there. So the adrenaline might start kind of high, like right now she's never swum before. After a few minutes though, when I let her stand on the gravel bar and I start petting her, she'll have that adrenaline dump and associate me with the comfortable spot. I've done it with hundreds of horses over the years of living down here, and it's really kind of neat to see how it works out. Not to mention, it's just fun. Horses, like children, need boundaries and leadership. Without them, they can become unhinged and dangerous. In the wild, they find these through the pecking order. A more dominant horse will take over and usually is an older and wiser horse, and the younger horses will willingly follow along and learn from the older horse. In this water, the horse is easily dominated. They, they takes away all their power from them, and they know that I have in complete control. That giving in process happens so much quicker in the water, and they realize that I'm basically in charge of their life right here. And that enables them to give in and start trusting and following me so much quicker. And this fear that they have of the water quickly turns to submission, and as soon as they submit, they realize they can start having fun and that the water is actually kind of like a playground. And when that happens, the adrenaline dump happens and the release happens and we really start to bond and make progress in the training. Now that release has happened and the surrender has taken place, the adrenaline dump is over and the mind is at its most pliable state that's when I like to put on the first rider. I'm using Isaac, my 11-year-old son here, because he's lighter than I am, and this is a small filly, which will help it be low impact. Plus, if anything does go wrong, uh, the kids think it's a lot of fun to get bucked off in the water. Of course, I like for the horses to take their first rider calmly and, set, and to be, you know, in a stable state of mind and not to buck or act up which is what you're seeing here with Miracle. Also, the river has got a sandy bottom or th deep gravel bottom, so it's low impact on a young horse like Miracle. We just got up there just for a short time and then got him back off because she was being really good and accepting the rider. Then I move her out. This is called a reset. Anytime a horse is learning something, you need to give them a good 10, 15 seconds off in between learning something and going on to the next step. That lets them, just like the word says, reset. It's resetting their brain, and then you can do it again. Horses need to learn in multiples. Um, I like to do everything three times is a good, is a good, um, a good time. That way you're not overdoing it or getting them bored with an activity, but you're doing it enough times to where it's going to sink in. When getting on and off in the water, 
it's easy to be very bold. I don't like for people to be timid or act like something might scare a horse when you're going to get on it for the first time. All that would do is put a horse on edge. I can see that Miracle has her ears pricked and she's looking at other stuff going on in the distance and the dogs and she's having fun. She's still licking and chewing. So I went ahead and moved her out this time because I could tell with her state of mind that she wasn't going to act up and that she'd be fine moving. You'll hear me reference licking and chewing several times in my training videos. Almost everybody that would be watching this is probably a horseman already and would understand. But licking and chewing is a body language that is the most common or easily interpreted sign of submission and calmness for a horse. So when they start to submit and they're working and their mind is pliable, you'll see their lips move and their tongue come out and they'll be kind of smacking their lips back and forth like they're chewing. That is a sign of um, submission or obedience. So if I ever say those terms, licking and chewing, and you didn't know uh, what I'm talking about, that'd be something good for you to look for. Right here, this is a body language to show that she's enjoying herself. She's just like a little kid too, and that smack on her lips in the water, <laughs> that's not submission, that's just pure enjoyment. It's a hot day, and um, she's a two-year-old horse. She knows that Isaac's a kid. Um, it's funny how horses will pick up on humans you know, being a domestic animal, they'll sometimes look at human as like a playmate. And a young horse would rather play with a young kid, just like um, kids look at other kids and want to play. So right there, you can see April is, or sorry, this isn't April, this is Miracle. You can see Miracle is having fun. I have a lead rope on Miracle, controlling her. However, Isaac is also giving her verbal cues and leg cues, just like as if he was riding her free, so that she's starting to associate those with having to walk or move. So he's saying walk, and he's tapping her with his heels right when I go to pull. And we're kind of coordinating our efforts to help her learn and interpret cues for the next step in her training. Oh, I didn't know that. That's yeah. Remember how earlier she'd go way out, and now she just huh on me, on me, on me. That's the goal of this. That's cool. Those little mess ups and failures of Isaac trying to climb on by himself are actually a good thing. The more you can put them through down here in the water where we're all safe, the better off they are. Here we can see we, he have him move all the way back to her rump and just kind of play all over her like a jungle gym. And it's, she's going to get calmer and calmer as we go. And she's just going to really be ready for riding here any day. Um, she's taken to this as well as to be expected. And I'm very pleased with the state of her mind and how willing she is. About a 30 minute training session is all a young horse's mind can take. So at that point, we took her back to the barn for a snack and a rest. Later that day, once she had dried off, I tacked her up and switched children to my 15 year old daughter, Rebecca. Rebecca is a very talented and accomplished horse trainer already, 
and we're going to go ahead and try to put the first uh, person on her back all saddled up and we have her bridled up too. Once again, I'm using my kids because, uh, you know, I'm getting old and I'm a wimp, so I don't want to fall off and get hurt. They recover a lot quicker, but also mainly because, you know, they're 100 pounds lighter than I am. And this little filly hasn't had a chance to build up any muscle yet or to finish growing. But I am of the school of thought that it's a lot better for the horse physically and definitely mentally to go ahead and start getting them trained and getting them saddled and backed as two-year-olds as opposed to waiting until their mind is more um, formed and they're set in their ways and it'll be much more stressful on them breaking them as a four-year-old. However, just like using the lighter riders and doing short little 30-minute sessions in the river, I like to make sure that I do everything in my power to make them grow early and to be to develop their muscles and their strength before you know i would ride them open on trail rides just like i explained earlier in the river this is a little reset for her brain she took becca leaning over the saddle with her full weight very well so we let her feet move and we pet her and reset her mind and try it again After everything that Miracle learned at the river earlier, this is old hat to her and we could get on her right away, but we're trying to go slow and make sure that she's comfortable. Um, there's something a little controversial I do too. I don't believe um, that giving a horse treats or positive reinforcement is bad for him. A lot of people don't believe in giving horses treats for being good, but on occasion I'll keep treats in my pocket and kind of let them associate all this stuff that's happening to them that's new with getting treats so that it's a positive memory for them. Horses, when you do something like this, you put them up in the stall later, they'll think about this and stew on it, and they learn just by setting and, and remembering what happened to them to the day because I've had come back the second day, and they're quite a bit further along than where I left them. So it's my opinion that they keep learning and they interpret you know what happened to them during that day um, later on in the stall that night so i like to make sure it's as positive as an experience as possible so this is the first time on her in saddle but we've been on her multiple times in the river three times and in three different trips to the river and we got on her and off of her you know a half a dozen times each trip so this isn't too too scary for her.
as you can probably tell, I already had this little horse trained to, you know, work in the round pen off my body cues. But this is the first time she's had a rider on her back on dry ground with a saddle on. And if you will start to watch, when you do your first ride on a young horse like this, you want to exaggerate your cues. So watch Becca's arms. See how far out they are, almost like she's driving a wheelbarrow? What I explain that as is a hallway. And imagine the hallway that you're in has doors on the left side, the right side, the right shoulder, the left shoulder, the right hip, the left hip, the tail, and the front end. Those doors are your hands, your body position, your legs, the pressure you're putting on them. And if you want a horse to go left, you need to close the right door and open the left door. Make that choice easy. That's what she's doing with her arms out like that. She's creating that hallway and you're trying to get that horse to learn to stay in the center of your hands or in the center of your legs or in the center of that, you know, um, that hallway that I'm using as a metaphor. You'll see as soon as Becca gets off here, without moving Miracle, I start to take her tack off. That is a form of reward, and in their psyche, they are going to associate how good they were with this release. It's like a pressure and release thing of getting unsaddled. So they'll think next time, oh, what did I have to do to get him to take all this tack off me? Oh, I remember I was calm and good and rode off for this little girl. Then he took the bridle and saddle off of me as soon as she got off. Um, it's just another form of positive reinforcement. I believe horses are so much smarter than people give them credit for. So are dogs. That's what I always tell people is uh, when they're asking how I do this or they say that they can't get their dog or their horse to do anything. Well, a lot of times the answer is you have to be smarter than the horse. <laughs> 